Uh, this is a show and tell for the Porter Problem, which is the introduction of Fix My Streets to Hackney. For people who aren't aware of this project, the vision of the Porter Problem Service is to create a simple method by which citizens can report a variety of issues online and get automatic updates. The issue with uh, the way that we do this at the moment is we have a variety of web forms that exist uh, on the council website uh, for some uh, of these types of categories that people want to raise issues for, such as potholes or graffiti or um, things like that, or they have to call the, the contact center. We first of all want to be able to uh, harmonize these into one place online, but also there's an issue where people will report an issue, but then never actually get an update back from the council about either when it's likely to be fixed by or when it's actually been fixed. So we get people calling back to the call center repeated times to find out what's happening with that. We decided to go forward with a product from my society called Fix My Street. And one of the great advantages of that is that when these issues are closed out, uh, people have an opportunity if they wish, they can leave an email address when they raise the issue um, and they'll get an automated notification to know when these things have been closed down. We're also gonna have the folks from the contact center uh, raising issues on people's uh, behalf. Again, we fixed my street. And again, uh, if people leave their email address, they'll get a notification when things are complete. So three major goals, provide a better user experience. Uh, Fix My Street's been running for some years now and has gone through lots of user experience. It's being used by a lot of local authorities, not only in the UK, but around the world. To reduce calls to the contact center, as I was saying, especially repeat calls to find out when things have been closed and to enable uh, new types of reporting uh, online. Uh, we're having a very good conversation, which I'll probably mention again later in the presentation uh, with my society about how we might be able to extend um, the use of that product to record uh, noise nuisance as part of antisocial behavior. Um, and we've already been through one round of prototyping of that uh, with them. So this is the third show and tell. The first two are available. I'll send the slides around. You can watch them. Uh, they're there. Um, and today we're going to have a quick intro, which I've gone through, a list of good things that are currently happening with the project, uh, our current set of uh, risks and issues, a bunch of opportunities that are happening, and then what's going to be happening uh, in the next week or two, and then time for questions at the end. So um, that's mostly a history of what we've um, I'll be talking about so far. Project started back in September to identify which project we're going to go with, uh, and then eventually we went with uh, Fix My Street. I picked it up uh, from December. Uh, Fix My Street, there's some information. If people want to pause the video and, and read through this, it'll tell you a little bit more about uh, Fix My Street uh, in detail. So let's talk about the, the good things that are taking place at the moment. So first of all, the training uh, for Fix My Street, uh, which is going to be for people from application support who will be supporting the tool after the project ends uh, and from the contact center, that's going to be taking place this Friday. Uh, originally, it was going to be taking place uh, three or four weeks ago, but because of the pandemic and everybody being um, uh, impacted by changes in what they were doing, it's been moved out, but that's now taking place on Friday. <clears throat> We had a really good meeting uh, two or three hours ago where we talked to my society about potential new features that we might uh, be working with them to put in place. One of which is around uh, being able to root uh, categories or issues that people are, are raising via the site to different teams in the council, depending on whereabouts it is, because uh, at Hackney, uh, we have teams that do certain pieces of work when they're on a resident, uh, tenant resident estate and other teams that do the same piece of work elsewhere in the borough. And that's not a piece of functionality that Fix My Street currently supports. So we're discussing about whether that might be something that we might want to work with them to implement. We've also um, been talking to them about uh, potentially integrating with WK Notify which is a system that can be used for sending out text messages. Uh, and we know that other local authorities are interested in doing that as well. So that meeting was really good. We've got some next steps for, for that. Uh, the lockdown has not stopped us going ahead with our user research. So the Hackney user research team is doing a great job of reaching out to people remotely during the lockdown to get feedback, partly on uh, the set of categories that we're going to be using for people to be able to raise different types of issues via Fix My Street. But also we've done an initial set of service design 
uh, for what our new pages on the actual council website itself will look like. Uh, and we're going to get feedback from that uh, to make sure that that uh, service design journey is good, that we don't just drop people directly into the fixed price treat interface. We give them a, a, um, a journey that leads them into uh, a place before they raise their issue that enables them to understand what they need to do. So we do have some issues, unfortunately, at the moment. Uh, the main one is that what we wanted to do was, uh, as part of the MVP, uh, was to integrate with a service called Alloy. Alloy is a new system that's being introduced into one of the teams uh, in the council uh, for handling case management for their issues. Um, we're not sure exactly when that's going to happen now. It was supposed to be deployed two or three weeks ago, but again, there's been a lot of uh, impact from the pandemic, and so we're still negotiating exactly when that's going to happen. That was going to be the main technical integration point uh, that we were going to do as part of, of the MVP. So we need to decide uh, if, if that's not going to happen in a timely manner, whether we still want to go ahead with the MVP before that's done. Uh, so we need to understand what's happening in that area. Um, we uh, need to uh, decide exactly what categories of reporting are going to be included in the MVP. So because of the subset of issues that we won't be able to route properly because it depends whether or not they're in a park on a housing estate or somewhere else in the borough. Uh, we're going to have to lock down the exact set of categories we're going to be using in our first release. Um, because we don't know what categories are going to be supporting, that's blocking us from updating the, the website because we need that decision first. Uh, and similarly, it's blocking us from being able to talk to um, the Hackney service teams that are going to be needing to work with Fix My Street um, once it's rolled out. So four teams that would be using Alloy, they would use Alloy as their case management system. As soon as they close a ticket, it would automatically get closed in Fix My Street via the technical integration. And that would mean that the person who raised the issue, the, the resident, would, would be automatically notified uh, by email if they've left an email address to say that issue has been solved. We do have a, a situation where uh, if an, the routing is done via email rather than a, a technical integration, then the normal system that would happen for the service areas in the council that work that way is that they would get an email, they would use that to raise an issue on their case management system and then close that down when they either say we're not going to do that or they fix the problem. In this situation, because it's come in via Fix My Street, they're going to need to close it in two places. They're going to need to close it on an existing case management system and close it in Fix My Street so that the resident gets notified. Um, and we can't really get into the conversations with those service areas in the council about that until we know which service areas are impacted and we won't know which ones they are until we can finalise the, the category list. So those are the, the category list and the alloy deployment are the two things which are acting as blockers for us at the moment. So that's the things that we're paying most attention to right now. However, this has left us with some opportunities because uh, we've not been going as fast as we might like according to the original timeline. Uh, my society has been very accommodating uh, in moving things out. They've had to juggle a lot of stuff because a lot of councils have been affected by the, the pandemic, but we've been able to move a bunch of stuff up that was gonna happen later on in the project. So we're completing the uh, integration of all our geo assets. So that's all the things that people might want to raise issues against. So that's anything from traffic lights to bus shelters to um, lampposts, all the things that might have a problem that somebody could click on and say, that's the actual thing that's got a problem. So that's very nearly finished. We're, we're very close to, to the goal line for that one. Um, we're integrating single sign-on via uh, G Suite via Google to enable the staff at the call center to log in without needing a different username and password. So that's a piece of functionality that my society is working on right now. Um, we're working with the security team to set up some automated cyber security scanning for uh, Fix My Street. My society is very pleased with that because it's something that they've been thinking about doing for years. Um, and we're just going to set that up for them. Uh, so I'm working with all the people concerned just to work out when that's going to fit in the time frame. Um, we're finishing uh, wrapping up the technical part of making sure that emails come from the Hackney domain rather than from Fix My Street. So people have a confidence when they receive an automated email that it's coming from the council. Um, we're going to be starting work very shortly on the content of those emails. 
Um, I'm probably putting that through some user research to make sure that um, they're going to be saying things we want. Um, and I'm not sure what the last one is. <laughs> I've read the slides, but I'm not entirely sure what the last one of those is. So moving on. Um, so what's coming up in the next couple of weeks? Uh, so um, we had a, a rich, a rich, like we had an original workshop uh, with Martin from our society about the noise nuisance prototype extension of Fix My Street. That went really well. He came back with some prototype designs. I collected a lot of feedback from um, the area in Hackney, which deals with noise nuisance uh, and some other places in our council, but also from another couple of councils that have participated in the original um, workshop, fed that all back to Martin. So we're waiting for the next iteration of the prototype to come round. Um, we've got all the work following up on the meeting we had this morning about the new features. As I say, getting our way going again, finishing the uh, categories for the MVP. Once we know uh, what they are, we can get the, the website design going. Um, because of the prototype that we did for that, which we did directly into um, the development part of the website, we know that that definitely works. And so just replicating that will be easy to do. We'll have to um, make sure that the content is right and put that in front of some people who are, who are content experts. But we already know that we can implement the website design in the way we want because we prototyped it straight into, into WordPress. Um, and then um, I said at the bottom, making sure that we talk to the appropriate service teams um, and put the, make sure that we work with them on an appropriate timeline for them to be able to understand what they need to do for when we switch the MVP on. Uh, and I've got a meeting later on this week with uh, William and Ade from the contact centre to make sure that following on for the training on Friday, we're in a good place to continue to take this forward with them. Any questions? Thanks, David. That was really that was really useful. Thank you. I had a couple of questions. Um, mm. One was around the categories. I think I might have just yep. missed this. What, what's blocking the decision about the categories? Well, there's there's the two things on on that really. The first one of which was the hard decision that we're going to go ahead to MVP without the categories that would require what I've been calling location-based routing, this idea of knowing whether the issue has been raised inside in the state or a park or, or elsewhere in the borough, because that cuts a significant number of categories off uh, if we don't have that functionality at the MVP. But I think that decision has been made. Um, and then the second thing, which... So what have we... Sorry, what... Oh, that we're going to go ahead without them. Is, is, the, is the decision, I think, for the MVP. Right. Um, and then the second part is purely that the team has been struggling to identify what method is used to contact some of the service teams in Hackney for the other categories. We think we know who the teams are, but we don't know whether there's a team uh, email inbox or if there's somebody who just takes all the requests or what those processes are for how they... Uh, on board their work and that's something that we're we're going through at the moment and we're hoping to get that done this week but those investigations are, are continuing but the folks that are doing that piece of investigatory work have also got a lot of other things on that are pandemic related so it's a question of prioritizing finishing off that information gathering piece but we know what we need to do it's just a question of getting it done mm. so on the that information gathering piece i'm wondering if susan and the um website team could actually might have some insight given that they've been thinking about people's custom user journeys they might understand they might have some insight around the business process that lies behind it yeah possibly. that's really good i'm i'm and then on the yeah sorry i was just gonna say i'm literally talking to susan about something else in 10 minutes so i'll bring it up ah so the other thing i was gonna say about susan and the website team is um if you needed someone to put the content under someone's nose who are content designers who would understand i suspect they are the best people and if you uh, maybe that's what you're already talking to her about no it's not but that that's perfect i didn't realize that we had um 
uh, content designers around that I could pass that under. But yeah, that'd be absolutely perfect. As soon as we've got the um, the category list nailed down, I'll, I'll immediately start talking to them about uh, making sure that, that our wording looks good. Um, and as we I was saying before... So we do at but, the moment is the answer? Yep. Cool. So as I was saying before, because we've got ongoing user research happening at the moment, my hope is that we'll have a set of people who will have responded um, because they're interested in giving feedback about this kind of stuff. And once they've responded about the initial website design and uh, some of the categories that we've got on there, which we're sending checking with them, the, at the same time, we can then potentially go back to them and say, and now this is both the content we're going to put on the website, but also the content we're going to put on the automated emails that get sent out and see if we can talk to the same folks about getting a round of feedback on those things as well. Thanks. Any more for any more? No, lovely. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming along. Um, I will uh, put this email in various places. I'll put it in G plus and, and on the Slack. Um, and uh, if you have any questions at any other point in time, just drop me a line. Can I just can I drop one more question in? Yeah, always. Now, it. So we've we've decided not to do the location based routing, so that's out. So that minimizes the number of categories that we can go live with in the MVP. Out of the other categories, is there like a priority list? As in, do we have to go live with all of them in the one go or could we start with two or three services? I mean, not at the moment. And the only reason why I'm reticent to do that um, is just I want to try and minimize the amount of iterative change we have to do uh, with the call center on top of everything else that they're having to cope with uh, in the current situation. Uh, we've had folks who've gone through a lot of change in, in fairly short order, and I'd like to try and minimize the amount of change they're going to have to do in relation to this going forward. So we'll, we'll continue to have, because I'm having a conversation, as I say, with William and Ade tomorrow, um, and I'll find out what their, mm -hmm. their feedback is on that. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to go ahead with everything that isn't um, uh, dependent on location-based routing. But if it turns out that we need to prioritise things, then we'll have that discussion and work out why the best way is forward. But I'm hoping that we'll be able to do everything. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, obviously, it would be better to be able to do all of them. But if... Um... But if the contact centre can cope with a bit and then another bit, yep. then we'll have we'll have proved we'll have proved the value. Do you think we'll deliver value to users earlier, yeah. won't we? If, oh yeah. If, let's say there's seven services and give them a ready to go, but we're waiting for the other four. Then we would go with the first three, I, I assume. Yeah. 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 So I think. Um, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Co colleagues in particularly in, in sort of managerial roles in the contact center will always vote for um getting it right at a later point in the process um for for, for perfectly understandable reasons um but i think in the in, in the current environment it becomes almost more important to to, to, to move small and, and and learn some stuff and then add, add some more stuff okay yeah that seems very reasonable um, I'll bring that up with, with William and Adam when we have our conversation tomorrow um, and suggest that um, we, between uh, us and my society, we come up with um, uh, a new date where we want to, to launch the MVP by, partly because that gives my society some understanding, partly because that enables us to give more feedback to the conversation about the alloy integration to say to uh, that team, we are thinking of going live by this date. Is this going to be feasible for you guys or not? Um, and also yeah. because yeah. it lights a bit of a fire under me to get the um, get the website done. Uh, so yeah. we'll, um, we'll we'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll give myself a, a, a task of, of speaking to Louise over at, at my society and and seeing if by the end of the week we can't have another um, go live date in the calendar. Brilliant, great, David. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks so I much. Think you're, I think I think Cheers. you're the sec you're the second online show and tell that we've done, and you did the first one as well. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks.